Okay, today I want to tie a moth. It's um, a very useful fly in our local rivers, especially evening time at sort of dusk when you're waiting at um, a session, waiting at a sea trout pool for a session with, with the sea trout. It's um, one advantage, it's a light coloured fly and it gives you that extra sort of hour or so um, fishing it as dusk comes on, you'd be fishing it normally dry fly method upstream <coughs> for, um, well, big trout like it and the odd sewin. And um, they, it's usually quite a, a large fish that takes this because they lose a lot of their uh, usual caution as dusk comes on. Okay, I'm going to start to tie it. I've already waxed the silk and I'll keep that um, uh, fly there to show you as we go along. The important thing, well what I want to show you, one, two, three, bear with me while I just do this, I'll talk as we go. I, I, I'm using a light silk, um, a brown coloured silk, and I'm using uh, a size 12 medium long shank hook because there's quite a bit of material on this fly, especially at the front end, where I put on a, a, a more than one hackle. Now, I'm going to tie it the fore and aft method. So I'm going to put a hackle on the rear end, the aft, and I, I put it sort of fairly well around the bend, because it's... Um, and I'm going to put on a little grizzle hackle because it it gives the impression of of life. It's a quite a nice little hackle, and um, I like it. This is the aft hackle. It's going well on the bend for for two reasons. One that it will help to well, it won't interfere with the hook point on a strike, and secondly, it um, although it's not important this aspect it helps to keep the wing wing down low now I've got the hackle on there so I'm going to wind it up I'm going to park my silk up the front to give me room to put on this little mini grizzle hackle I like a grizzle hackle it uh, it sort of shimmers and gives a a nice impression of life put a few quite a few turns on because it's such a small hackle and to get it to get anywhere with it 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 will help to keep the fly afloat and it'll give the impression of legs but you've got to have quite a few winds with it because it's such a small hackle let's get it back a bit to the bend there keeping a bit of tension on it as I go and I can wind over over it a bit if I if I need to. I hope my fingers are not blocking your view. Okay, that that that'll do. Now I'm going to take myself back down, ready to uh, secure it. So I wind up to it, draw things back a bit. I wind up onto the hackle, ready to tie it down, ready to secure it like that. Now that it's there, I'll nip it off. Now you get um, two takes to this fly, two types of takes. Um, as we're talking, I'm going to carry on with the materials. This is the, the rib. You get, as I said, two types of takes. One is a beautiful head and tail porpoise type of rise. When you fish this fly, in deepish water. I say the trout lose a bit of their caution and um, it takes that beautiful, when the head head goes down there with that beautiful porpoise type of roll, when the head goes down you just tighten and uh, you, you, you'll um, find that you can hook the, 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 the trout on the occasional sea trout as well. Okay the body is going to be rabbit. I'm using this patch here and I've just torn bits off it and I'm going to uh, dub them on. You've heard me say before, and you're probably fed up of hearing me say, with all dubbing, don't put on too much. 
So the dubbing goes up like this. I'll shorten my silk because the winds may hit the camera. Get right up tight to the hackle as you can see. Wind on like this. With dubbing, I always say add a little and often. It does help. And I'm only going to dub this body about halfway up because there's going to be a thorax and wings. But not in that order. The wings go on before the thorax. Okay, dubbing up here. To about there. That's it. That's what I want to go. So now I'm going to rib it. I want the rib. The rib adds a bit of sparkle. I think it gives a bit of, um, a little bit of attraction as well as sort of protecting the rabbit, rabbit body. Like that. And it gives a segmentation to the fly body, which all natural flies have. Let's get hold of it here. Now that it's there, I'll tie it down. A bit restricted with the camera lens, so I just ask you to bear with me on that. Okay, that's, t that's secured the rib. Now the next item is going to be the wings. And I'll just show you again on this uh, sample how the wings come out. I think they're sort of moth-like. And what I do is I um, use a wing cutter. I cut the wing like this. Um, this is the wing cutter. Press it down on a piece of newspaper or something like that and you get that cut and you tear it down like this to expose that's one single wing but I, on this particular fly I split the wing uh, this is a, a darker feather than I'm actually going to use but I'll show you how I I cut down the wing so that the wings come out in half like this Okay, it's a little bit fiddly to do, but it's worth doing. I'm now going to put the wings on. I put them on one at a time, um, because I find it's a bit easier to position them that way. So, And they go well back. The moth, as you know, has got quite biggish wings, a bit like, uh, well, butterflies and moths, they have quite big wings. How's that one there? That's going okay. I'll just draw it through a little and I'll show you what I'm about. It's tilting a little, so I'll just get it at a slightly different angle. Can be a little bit fiddly to do, but worth doing. A little bit scary sometimes doing things on camera because if it's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong on the camera. <laughs> you can tie dozens up yourself and when no one's about. That's one on and now I'm going to put the other. Draw that one through a bit and I'll secure them. Now I'll just tilt them to show you. Can you see how they're on there? I think they're moth-like. And that's it. I've put a good few winds on the um, on the stalks, so I won't be bending them back to nip them off. I often do that when I put certain feathers on, particularly hackles, because uh, it'll secure them. Okay, I've got those on there now, and I'm now going to put on the thorax. I use one strand of peacock curl for the thorax, and by drawing it down like this, you bring up the, what we call the flu. It gives it a, a furry sort of look to it. 
Peacock Hurl, as you know, gets a bit brittle towards the end, so I always snap off the end of it. And I'm going to tie this on like this. Tie it down like that. A little bit of some sort of fibre there, which I'll nip off. Okay, before I wind the peacock curl thorax, I'm going to put a touch of varnish for two reasons. One, to help the peacock curl thorax to stick. And it sort of runs onto the wings, the root of the wings. And it helps to set them. It doesn't, it, it doesn't affect the, the wings. I park my silk at the front. Now I've spoken about the two types of rises. One is that porpoise type of rise, head and tail rise, in deepish water. The other, in shallower water, is a sort of a vicious snatch at the artificial fly. And when you get that snatch, the fish, if it's a big one, but in shallower water it's usually not as big, um, it can often break your leader or your tippet. Uh, so uh, if you are fishing this fly, always keep the rod tip high. Take my silk back down. Keep your rod tip high because that belly from the, um, the tip to the water will um, cushion the, the take if you get a real vicious snatch. Okay. Uh, so, you, you know what I mean, that belly from your rod tip down. Okay, the next hackle, I now come to the hackles. I put two on the front. One is quite a strong, good quality white hackle. And this goes on, and it, it really supports the second hackle that I'm going to put on. And you'll see that in, in a moment. This goes on first, figure of eight, that way that way the figure of weight is is like crossing over the stalk now that i'm back here i because i'm winding this hackle and i don't want it to pull out i'm going to wind on to the stalk like that so you you probably see the stalk bent back i can't quite see it yet but i'm going to trace it i can see it now i'm going to trace it and cut it off like that okay uh, before I go any further I'm going to park my silk at the front and I'll wind this hackle this is quite a stiff cock hackle because the next heart hackle is a partridge hackle, which is a soft one. And this hackle here is the important one because it's going to support the one in front, which we'll come to in a mo. Okay, that's the hackle. So we all together we got three hackles on this fly. We've got the little one at the rear the aft hackle and then we got these at the front the fore hackle now the um, <coughs> at the front we're going to use a partridge hackle and the partridge it's it's quite a pretty it's it's a body hackle and uh, it's when it's a body hackle all body hackles have a thick stalk so we tend not to tie them in by the stalk because it gives a thick bulky head so what we tend to do with the partridge hackle, the other body hackles, is we tie them in by the tip. And to do that, we get the tip and we draw things down like this. Can you see how I've done that? Can you see that, what I call a waist, a little waist there, which I want to tie this in. Now the, the, the tip is, it can be a bit brittle, on occasions 
So you have to be a bit careful when you wind it in because this brittle tip can, um, can snap. Now I'll just remove these bits and pieces but to be quite honest they don't really matter too much. Watch we don't cut the silk which I have done more than once. Okay, still one or two little ones there. If you bear with me, I'll just tilt this to get at them. Okay, right. Get my silk well to the front. And I wind this partridge hackle like this. I try to draw it back a bit to what we call double the hackle, double in the hackle. I say the partridge hackle is very popular on um, wet flies, but it's not used very often on dry flies. And this is a dry fly. Just wind it around like this. Camera lens is restricting me a little bit, but if you bear with me, I'd be grateful. Winded it on like this. First few winds are the most difficult because of the hackle stalk. When it starts getting to the thick part of the stalk where there's a bit of strength, it's okay. Tends to come okay. Got to keep hold of this stalk. Because this is what helps me. Right, I've got it there. I'm going to give it a secure it. One or two winds. Then I'll remove the thick stalk and try to uh, improve on it. I noticed I distorted the wings a little. I want to try to keep them in line before the varnish, before the varnish dries. It's okay. Okay, out with this thick stalk. May remove one or two of the other hackles. Don't really matter. Right, now I'm going to now try to wind up onto the push these hackles back to give me a clearer head like this. And the best way to do that is use a um, half hitch. So what I do, I give it a wind like this. And I've got a half hitch here. So I now put that on, slide it down. Hope you can see this happening. Slide it down and that will sort of get the hackles back. Do you see that? Now that's a good little tip. Now I've got a bit of clearance to form the head. I'll try to do that again. You've got to keep a bit of tension on it, you give it a roll like this, get it up, and keeping a bit of tension, slide this down like that, and it keeps the hackles out of the way so that I can form the head. I've got one or two stray fibers there. Okay, now the tool I'm using <laughs> is a cotton bud. I've cut one end off with the scissors, and I've had to make sure that the ends are not burred over or sharp or rough because the silk won't slide off. Okie doke, here we are. I've got to just complete the fly now. Complete the head. And that will be the tying of the moth. I'm going a bit slow because the camera lens is fairly close because I want to show you some of the detail. Okay, that's the head done. I've now got to do the whip finish, which would be a teeny bit challenging because of the, again I say the camera, I cross over, form the loop, and wind it round like this. One, two, three. I normally give three on a dry fly, on a bigger fly, a salmon or sea trout fly. I don't do many salmon flies because I 
normally do flies that I'm experienced at using and I can recommend uh, from personal experience because we don't get too many salmon in our local rivers, although they are increasing. Okay, I'm going to cut the silk, usual procedure. You can see that fly flex in there a bit. So I get the fly under tension. I open my silk, my scissors, and I push it up against the silk. That way you will not cut off any of the hackles. Now before I attempt to position these hackles, I'm going to um, uh, varnish the head. I'm looking at the wing here just to make sure it's still got that profile. You see the profile I'm trying to get? I could put on full size wings but when you cast the fly the, these are full size wings two of those but when you cast the fly it's not quite so aerodynamically it's not so aerodynamic I should say and it can cause it to sort of spin a bit but with these flies which are sort of with these wings here which are almost delta shape they, they it works okay Okay, I'm going to put on some varnish. I just put it there and I roll it around and move it. And I'm there. Now I just want to show you, this is my Sally Hansen's brush, which I've tapered and I paint the head on biggish flies but with a smaller fly this is a size 12 but there's a lot of hackles I just wipe the bristles like that and pick up a little blob of varnish I've done it so I don't need to do that again there's enough on there for now if you want to give your flies an extra coating of varnish I suggest you leave them for 24 hours I don't bother too much with that because I wax the silk Right, now that, um, and with the wax silk, there's, you know, a bit of protection there. Now I'm going to try to position these hackles a bit. Have a look at them. Yeah, now they're pretty good. Now you can hardly see the strong white one tucked in there by the thorax. You can hardly see it, but that's the one that is supporting this big one in the front. <coughs> and when this fly lands on the water, these long hackles bend at the tips and they form like little feet. And it allows the fly to sort of shimmer. And with the back hackle here, that also does a similar thing. And it does give the impression of life. In the dusk, uh, the, the, a, a large trout will come and have a go at it. Uh, I, I feel very confident about it. Now, the fly uh, is, is a take. It's a slight variation of Courtney Williams' um, ermine moth, <coughs> which is a very good fly. I, I, I've tried them both. I've tried several. I've had more success with this. And I think it, it's a fly I can recommend to you. Okay, hope you enjoyed watching that. Thanks very much.